What's going on guys? On today's video, I will talk about five common misconceptions about the American bully breed, particularly here in the Philippines, or probably it would also apply in your own country. Roll that intro. misconception about the bully breed is that the bullies cannot get thick in tropical countries such as the Philippines or Southeast Asia in particular. That is a misconception. American bullies, same as human beings and other animals, have genes. If it's in their genes, to become bully, it will happen eventually, all right? No amount of temperature, high or low, would affect the genes, all right? If an American bully possesses strong or very strong classic American bully genes, even if it lives in the North Pole together with Santa Claus, it will not get thick like the standard bullies, all right? It's in their genes already. And vice versa, if you have a bully living here in the tropical region of the Earth, such as Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, some parts of Vietnam and parts of China, lower China, then if that American bully possesses the bullier genes, you just need to be patient. They will eventually reach the age wherein they will show off or showcase their, that bullier physique. All right? Temperature is not a determining factor whether your bully will become standard or classic, it's already in their genes, all right? Here's what I can tell you about hot temperature countries or high temperature countries or tropical countries such as the Philippines. High temperature affects first, the appetite, and second, coat condition, skin condition. So you might ask me, John, if it affects the appetite of the bully, will it? It will not be bully. No, 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 no. That's wrong. That's another misconception. If it's in the genes already, despite a low appetite dog, eventually, if you corrected that low appetite situation, eventually that genes will kick in. And when, as soon as it matures, the bullier trait, the real American bully trait or physique, will come out. You just need to be patient, be resourceful. Lack of appetite is not affecting the genes. It's only a temporary setback, all right? It's a setback because as of the moment, your American bully is having a low appetite situation. And I have videos already discussing about how to um, correct picky eating dogs, all right? The picky eating situation, how to correct it, all right? But it doesn't dictate how an American bully should look like eventually when it matures, all right? So first, it affects the appetite, but once you correct it, as long as it possesses the bullier traits, it will eventually come out as soon as it matures, all right? And secondly, the only disadvantage, one disadvantage, not only, one big disadvantage of living here in a tropical region of the world is the coat condition because of the humidity. 
All right? So companies here in Southeast Asia or even in other countries, they know our situation. They're trying their best to manufacture supplements to combat these situations. All right? As you can see, not all of our dogs have bad coats. Yes, we are more prone compared to colder climate countries. All right? But it doesn't mean the bully genes is affected. So guys, here in the tropical regions of the world, all you need to do is correct that low appetite situation. Maybe put him an, in an AC room. Uh, make sure that uh, the kennels will ventilate it. Place fan. So remedy, remedy, all right? And secondly, uh, the cold condition, the same thing. If, it really, if it's really the temperature that's uh, affecting the cold and the skin, then place it on a, a colder uh, environment, all right? The second misconception I've always heard since the beginning of time is once a dog is pregnant or mated, you cannot make her take a bath. That's a myth. That's a misconception. Right? Pregnant dogs or mated dogs can definitely take a bath. Alright? But one thing you should consider is consider using organic soaps or organic shampoos rather than the stronger shampoos or soaps with strong chemicals in it. Alright? There are tons of products already available in the internet or in the, in the pet shops where they're, it's labeled as organic. I would suggest to use organic soaps or shampoos for pregnant dogs or even non-pregnant dogs, all right? Second thing you can consider is the handling during bathing, all right? The most important thing to know when handling pregnant dogs, especially if their bellies are too big already, is that when you're trying to lift them, if you need to lift them, is lift them below the tail, maybe on their butt area, grab their butt area, and on their chest, all right? So, so when bathing pregnant dogs, oh, you can bathe them, but of course, handle with care, all right? Always on the chest area, or one hand on the chest area, close to the neck, and then on the butt or below the tail area if you need to lift them, all right? But you can, you can let them take a bath, all right? Third, third thing you should consider is the alternative to bathing, all right? That you, you don't need to bathe them all too often, all right? All you need to do is probably bathe them once in two weeks during pregnancy if they're really dirty already. But, but you can do um, soak a clean cloth in a lukewarm water, put the organic soap or organic shampoo, and then try to clean areas. Be careful on their belly side, but clean their faces, their, their arms, their armpits, their legs, and everything. You can also do that. So again, the second misconception is pregnant or mated dogs cannot take a bath. The third misconception in the American bully community that I've always heard is that uncropped bullies have big disadvantage over crop bullies during dog shows. It is a misconception. If you have watched my American Bully Standards video, I mentioned there that cropped or uncropped bullies can be shown, can compete in the show ring. Being uncropped is not a disadvantage, all right? But I do understand why people will say, oh, more, more crop dogs 
is what is shown in the social media that are always winning. But here's the truth. The probability of crop dogs winning over uncropped dogs is so high, it's because probably 95% of show dogs are cropped. So it's just mathematics. If there are lesser dogs that are uncropped and there are 95% of dogs in the show ring cropped, then the probability of a cropped dog, cropped ear dog, would win, right? It's very high, right? But it's definitely not a no-no to have a crop, uncropped or natural ears to be shown. You can show your dogs with uncropped or natural ears, and they can definitely win. Us judges are trained. Us judges should know that it's not a disadvantage, all right? So please, again, refer to the American Bully Standard. Again, uncropped, cropped, natural ears, they're all the same in our eyes as judges, all right? But again, 95% are cropped. No, not crap, cropped. All right? So the probability of them winning is always higher. The fourth misconception that I've always heard is female dogs cannot win over males in show competitions. That is not true. Again, the truth is in the pudding. The 2014 Nationals winner, basically the ABKC Nationals winner for 2014, is a female named Sweet and Low. And this Sweet and Low has produced females, spectacular females also, that keeps on winning in dog shows. So when you tell me that females have always the disadvantage or cannot win over males, that is not true. Don't convey that message, all right? But let me explain why I think people think about, think like that, all right? Of course, owners all over the world, sad to say, they have this preference over males. Owners, not judges. Owners have preference on males to show. They prefer males, many, many, not all, but many owners, many show competitors prefer males to compete, to compete in a dog show, all right? So definitely, again, you see more and more males. But if you have a quality female, some of these show homes, they actually prefer not mating their spectacular females until they reach the grand champion status or they at least serve their purpose of being of joining competitive shows because they possess great American bully traits for a female and they can definitely win over males all right so again just like math or probability based on my previous misconception. Since owners prefer males to show in the competition, then more and more males are winning, all right? But again, it's not true that your females cannot win over males. And one prime example of that, and to bust that myth, is that the 2014 Nationals winner overall Winner is a female named Sweet and Low, bred by Donald Holmes. All right, so it's a misconception. And the fifth misconception that I've always heard, that I've always read, is that dogs with folk should not join dog shows because they will automatically lose. That is a misconception. Again, if you're able to watch my American Bully Standard video, which I will put a description down below, 
there are three classifications of fault. These are faults, major faults, and disqualifications. All right. Of course, if a fault falls under the disqualifying faults, then that's automatic. Major fault, it's almost impossible, almost impossible to win if you have a major fault. But let's say you have a fault and let's discuss. Most common fault that show people are very afraid of is the bite fault. So if you have a slight underbite, whether it's slight or not, but probably if it's slight, that's still fault. Whether it's slight or not, still fault. But again, you can still, there's still a possibility for you to join shows because that's not a disqualifying fault. And people may ask, John, yes, my dog is not disqualified. Yes, my dog possesses underbite. But can it win in a competition? Yes, it is also possible. Because how can you rule out winning if you don't know the competition? Let's be frank and straight about it. If you got a spectacular American bully in terms of, of the standards, structure, performance, gating, stacking, and everything, but it does have a slight underbite, you still can be competitive in the show ring. Because for sure you don't know who is your gonna be your competition. What if your competition has more faults than what your dog has? Alright? You get my point? It's not automatic. You know why I'm trying to emphasize on this? Because here, particularly here in the Philippines, which I assume, which I assume in other countries also, that once a dog of them, of theirs, have a certain fault, their automatic thinking is never go to show, never bring that dog to the shows. All right? I know how, how perfectionist you are, but if you have a spectacular dog and it has a fault, why not showcase your dog? Win or lose? If, if your dog is spectacular, but it does have that underbite, win or lose, just go to the shows. All right, so it's a myth, it's a misconception to think that if you have a dog with a certain fault, especially not major, especially not disqualifying fault, that you cannot win in shows or at the minimum, at least join the shows. I know most of us are perfectionists. We want our dog, we want to bring dogs in the show that are almost perfect. I know that. I know a lot of people who are like that. And to a point, I am like that also. But it is wrong to think that if you've got an underbite dog and you cannot go to the shows or you cannot join the competition. That is wrong. All right? Try to be positive. Yes, you have an underbite dog, but it's, it, it's still your dog. Spectacular in terms of uh, the standards. Bring it, showcase it, be positive, promote, support the shows, bring out your dogs. Don't keep your dogs in your kennel only because they got certain faults. They deserve to be showcased. We love all of, the, of these dogs. Let's bring them out. All right? I'm begging you, whether you show or not, support dog shows. All right? In this video, I discuss five misconceptions about the American bully breed. These are only five. There are tons of misconceptions about the breed, about how to take care of them, how to show them, how to nurture them, how to uh, let them exercise. There are a lot of misconceptions. But this is just the first five out of a lot of misconceptions. I promise you that I'll... Uh, record more videos discussing misconceptions but uh, if you enjoy this video feel free to like and subscribe all right see you next time